We're in a constant state of flux. Everything is up and down on any given day. In today's fast-paced environment, it's even more exaggerated. Now we look at the economy of the US, but even more so the global economy. It is apparent that this weakness is present everywhere with varying degrees of intensity. How the Fed is planning on rescuing the economy is completely beyond anyone's wildest imagination. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Remember, we're talking about the economy, not the stock market. That's a whole different ball game. The Federal Reserve can do whatever they need to to the stock market to different assets as well. But the actual economy can never be improved by printing money. It is a simple matter of fact. Take a look at the financial crisis for that very example. The belief is that they'll start to print print up money, they'll buy up these assets, and that will kickstart everything back the way it was. But this did not happen in that way in 2008. We have a huge hole that is left unfilled, and unfortunately, it's going to take everybody down. Let's look at the economic factors today, the financial aspects, the Federal Reserve, the repo situation, what's happening with the GDP, and so much more. Let's begin. Quick update on what's happening with the repos. You can see towards the bottom, $77 billion in this case here. Just wanted to show you that this is still going on. At this point right now, it is completely understood that Fed's repo stress will ease but not disappear by year end. This has come out from many different sources suggesting that the problems we have with the repos will continue all the way through into next year. To me, that is a very good sign that we have an extreme weakness present and yet so many people out there in the financial industry talk about how fantastic it is that the Federal Reserve is doing this. They're always highlighting the ability of the Federal Reserve to do what they do, print money. But nobody ever wants to talk about how this is actually happening in the first place. Can this be resolved? Is this actually an underlying problem in the financial system? Or is this simply short-term noise? Well, of course, when you hear Jerome Powell speak, he's going to give you one message. But there's always something going on behind the scenes. We have seen the level at which they are intervening right now with the repos, surpassing what we saw during the financial crisis. We've already gone behind that and yet it has only just begun. Back at that last meeting that they had, of course, we always get the meeting minutes afterwards. And apparently, they were watching this issue with the repos happening, and they were paying close attention. They knew that they were going to have to do this. They just hadn't decided at that moment that they wanted to move forward with it. So they waited a little while. And of course, they said that line, and I'm paraphrasing, we're ready to act soon. And of course they did. It was only a little while after that. They called the emergency meeting. Everything happened. And now here we are. I personally believe that something is going on that we're not being told. Cracks have appeared. That is very clear. How this will affect the larger economy, the larger financial system, only time will tell. So this is an interesting chart. The line at the top is the S&P 500. However, at the bottom is what I want you to focus on. We're looking at volume. Take a look at the near record low volume that we are seeing today. What's going on right now with traders, with the money managers, and their allocation of capital? Are they simply waiting and seeing? Are they looking at this at a time of complete uncertainty as you see the stocks heading to new all-time highs? It isn't strength pushing it up to all-time highs. It is simply a few players in the game ensuring this market continues the way they want it to. That, to me, isn't a very good sign of strength. And this is absolute proof that something's going on behind the scenes. 
The US economy has hit a lot of bumps in the road lately, and the way forward is unlikely to get any smoother. This article out of Market Watch gets into some of the details, points to it, and it's a well balanced article, and of course, suggesting that in the end, everything is gonna be okay. A barrage of reports on the economy this coming week are expected to show US growth slowed at the end of the summer. The smoldering trade issues with China has sapped business investment undercut American manufacturers and farmers and cause a decline in hiring. The jobs numbers are going to come out. We're going to have the Federal Reserve come out this week. GDP numbers are not looking good. I'll show you that in a minute. We've got a lot of information that is going to be coming in the next short period of time. I will have all that data for you in coming videos. Let's look at what we have today. Cumulative fiscal budget deficit, the deficit of the United States, is absolutely disgusting. You can see right here a trillion dollars. That big red line shows you approximately one trillion dollars of their budget, of budget deficit. This is unbelievable, unprecedented, and while it isn't the biggest ever, it is certainly terrible by any means. This chart here is just comparing the years 2012 to 2012. 2019 showing you where it's been over this period nobody even cares about deficits anymore and ultimately all of this will come back to haunt everybody it's a matter of fact annual U.S. Treasury budget deficit, you could see it on this chart from the 90s up until where they believe it's going to head over the next few years. Clearly, we have a very big problem, and this is when there's no recession, no downturn, none of that, okay? This is all happening at a time when everything is fantastic. We are robbing the future right now just to survive the present and never Never in anywhere in history has that been a successful program. Northman Trader had this to say, and it kind of summarizes this video. Trillion dollar deficits, 110% debt to GDP, $120 billion daily repos, $60 billion per month, Fed balance sheet expansion, rate cuts galore, sub 2% GDP growth, and quote by Jay Powell, the economy is in a good place. Clearly, Jay Powell and I do don't see eye to eye, that's an absolute fact. Look at what the Federal Reserve themselves are doing. We're talking about massive intervention on a scale that we basically have never seen before. They're cutting rates a couple times already. The expectation this week is that they'll do it again. For the economic indicators, I'm going to show you this in just a second, but the GDP growth is not looking very good. At the same time, we have these massive deficits. You've been spending all this money, you've been intervening in the markets, and where's the growth? Growth. Well, there is some information that has been noted for a long time. I've shown you here before. I know you know this already, but essentially the more money they print into the system, the less of an effect it has. So what they used to do, let's say financial crisis, if they printed $1 trillion, printing $1 trillion today would not have the same impact. You might have to print $1.5 trillion, $2 trillion, maybe it's $10 trillion. I don't know the numbers, but just like a drug addict, just like an alcoholic, in order to get the same buzz, they need more and more and more. This is exactly the same thing in the financial system or in the economy. Brand new info talking about the GDP. The now cast provided to us from the New York Fed website shows the fourth quarter of 2019 at 0.92%. This is unbelievable. You could see it right here on the chart. It doesn't mean that that's what they're going to post, but this information is up to the minute. So we're seeing it as it stands today. Certainly things can turn around if they fabricate something who knows but at least at this moment right here this is what it shows 0.92 percent if you ever want to see this for yourself you can just go to a search engine and type in now cast n-o-w-c-a-s-t and that is at the newyorkfed.org website 
As always, you know, I really like to show this as often as possible because I want to give you all this data and then show you why it's important to you. I get messages all the time from people saying, I don't care about the Fed repos. I don't care about what the Fed is doing or this group is doing or I don't care about the IMF and this and that. It affects everybody. It affects you. It affects your family. It affects your friends, your co-workers and so on. As time goes on, everything that these central bankers are doing are actively pushing down upon you. Take a look at the top 1%. Their incomes have been steadily rising over the last few decades. So we're looking at this chart on the left hand side here and ultimately I think it's pretty obvious who the top 1% is. It's that black line. If we go to the top 5% to the top 1% that's the next group and that is of course the blue line. We go below that the red line is the top 10 to the top 5% and you can see that even in this group here the growth has been far less substantial than what we see in the higher groups. So those in the top 1% have absolutely benefited from the central bank policies. The top 5% have also benefited to some degree. In the top 10%, it's not as prominent. And then you look at the bottom 90 or perhaps the bottom 80, and there's basically no growth there. That's a hell of a lot of people that are not seeing the benefit of all the central bank quantitative easing. And I assure you, just like what we are seeing in all of these different cities around the world. This massive group of individuals are pissed off and they're going to take to the streets. Really quickly, wanted to touch on this point. I'm following the WeWork situation, bringing you only the important points. China has emerged as one of WeWork's worst performing markets as a local operation, once seen as critical to the office provider's global growth, suffers from ultra low occupancy rates and is, quote, bleeding cash. If you see in the bottom paragraph, WeWork locations in Shanghai had where it has installed a whopping 40 3,600 desks had a vacancy rate, look at this, 35.7% in October. And that's one city. In the other where the company has 8,000 desks, 65% were vacant. In Hong Kong, 22% were unfilled. I mean, just seeing all of this happening right now at a time where this company is absolutely taking a beating, it seems like everything is piling on. Again, the reason I mentioned this company is because we give all this money to these particular companies, unicorn companies, and everybody feels so satisfied and they think that this company is worth this many billion or that many billion, and then, like a puff of smoke, it all disappears. China's WeWork equivalent called U-Commune files for US IPO. So at this time right now, we've got serious issues with WeWork and the Chinese equivalent apparently wants to file for a US IPO. It didn't work out very well for WeWork. I'm wondering what's going to happen with this company, if there's anything interesting related to it in the next little while. Of course, I will have a video for you. I'm going to end it there. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. Wait a second, don't go anywhere because you got to hit that button before you leave. Thank you very much. If you want to build a business, if you want to make money, if you want to learn how to build passive income, then you need to check out this free step-by-step e-course. It's at the amazongps.com. The financial system is purposely designed to keep you from understanding the truth. I wrote these two books to make it so simple for everybody to learn. Check them out at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook, that's available at themoneygps.com. Hang on a second, don't go anywhere. Have you seen this video? If not, definitely click on it and I will see you there.